what you have here is you've got two crepe murals that have been given to you, mm -hmm. right? And we don't know what size they are, mm -hmm. and we got to find a place to put them. Mm -hmm. Well, it's actually backwards from what we typically do when it comes to plant selection and landscape design. Ideally, what you want to do is evaluate your situation mm -hmm. and to see what plants could go here. Um, Would a crepe provide a lot of uh, shade? No? It won't provide any shade. Okay. But it's going to be it will provide the ornamental features of flowers and things like that mm -hmm. in the summer. So you, you step back and first and evaluate your needs or desires in this case and choose a plant based on those characteristics instead of working the other way around. In this okay. case, we've picked out the crepe myrtle. So this is not we, the way to do it. It's not the way to okay. do it. Uh, so ideally, you learn won't. From. We'll learn, learn from us. Learn from that. But that's where people get in trouble. And uh, with crepe myrtles especially, they choose a variety that's way too big for the space. Mm -hmm. And then they start going back and they prune them heavily in January and February. In fact, they're already doing it now. I've seen some here recently. To, to And ignoring the fact that you've got the wrong plant and the wrong space which you said not to do which is what you don't want to mm -hmm. do so in this case we'll just we're going to have to work a little bit backwards uh we know these are crepe myrtles can be very large probably potentially up to 30 feet tall mm. uh probably at least 15 feet wide and now we're going to find a place to put it we're going to put them to choose full sun but allow plenty of space for them to grow mm -hmm. as well as plenty of space for them to be apart mm -hmm. so if, if you go if you're looking at an area and decide to put a plant in like that, then you need to go ahead and decide on the mature size of where it's going to fit great. In this case, we're going to allow plenty of room regardless. Mm -hmm. Can you just look at this? You, you, you've got more sun on this side. Right. Uh, and my first thought was to make them symmetrical from, from looking from this side, one on each side, but you've got the walkway here mm -hmm. on the right side that doesn't make it symmetrical. And so backing that up, uh, one could potentially go here mm -hmm. to serve as an accent for this area. Right. And then maybe put one on up the hill. Here. Or up in here in this corner to accent this space over this side. Mm -hmm. Stop taking a lot of, you know, we want to back off plenty of it doesn't get into your, to your house, mm -hmm. into the top of the house. So potentially do it here or uh, right there on, on the point. All right. And then we're not dealing with shade, compacted soil on that side. We're dealing with just plenty of sunshine. Plenty of sunshine, probably better soil. Mm -hmm. And also would accent this part of your, your backyard as well. Okay. And you said you were, you said bird sanctuary earlier, then also to provide some low shrubs and things like for that, that for the birds. Mm -hmm. As they go they from really feeder to feeder, yeah. there's not a there's not a close tree there near the feeders. So as that gets in size, that'll also provide a perch uh, and shelter. Because they they, the they really use these, you know, around here. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing people don't think about when they put out a tree, especially close to the house, is windows. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got any window areas here, you always want to look up to make sure there's no power lines in that area. And before we dig, we hopefully there's no water line, gas lines, or anything like that yeah. of, of the exactly spot that we want to pick. So it's more than just, there's more into it than just digging a hole and putting the plant in the ground. There ha you have to put a little bit of time and, and effort into, and think about some things long before term. Mm -hmm. uh, because this, this tree will get big, probably in five years, it'll be close to 20 feet or bigger mm -hmm. if the conditions are right. And it'll, how, it'll how, definitely how, change your landscape. How far out would it go? It'd probably go at about at least six feet. Yeah. Depending on the yeah. type of crepe myrtle, it's mm -hmm. going to go out and up. It's mm -hmm. going to be more vase-shaped uh, in, in over time. Okay, okay. All right. It will be different than a, a camellia right. or a magnolia um, or a dogwood or even the shade, you know, shade trees, your oaks. It's going to be more ornamental. It's going to be a, more of a vase-shaped. So not like the chrysanthemums out there. Is that what those are? Uh, okay. Sasanko, so you got, we got Sasanko camellias blooming. Camellias, yeah. They're, they'll be upright like that, but probably not as wide. Okay. Uh, and there's many species of crepe myrtles out there, so that's why you want to do your homework to find out what size and shape and color oh, okay. and, and things like that it'll be to, before you invest in something like right. that. And so, so backing up with plant selection, if we were doing it correctly, <laughs> then we were saying we've got full sun. Mm -hmm. We want something ornamental here in this area mm -hmm. that would that would occupy a space about 10 foot by 10 foot. Uh, 
to, to allow uh, for, for root zones. There's no interference. And then what tree would go good in that area? So based on those specs, if that's what Kenny was wanting, then something like a redbud tree, a dogwood tree, mm -hmm. a, um, a Japanese maple, which has gorgeous fall foliage right now. But plant at this time of the year in November? Absol absolutely. Okay. Okay. Fall is the okay. best time to do all okay. your planting for your for your trees and your shrubs and even some of your perennials. Okay, all right. Okay. So uh, what do we do next, start digging? We start digging. <laughs> that's, that's the fun part. All right. Size, pop that's in. Right. And is that deep, would that be deep rooted? We have to dig a deep hole? No, <laughs> no. All right, so far so good. So far we won't have to go deep, but we want to go wide, okay. which is going to be a lot easier on both of our bags. Yeah. Now, in this case, you've got a pot that's about uh, 18 inches wide, mm -hmm. give or take. So we need to go about at least two to three times wider mm -hmm. than that. Okay. Three is ideally, because we probably need to come out 18, at least 18 to two feet this way, 18 to two feet this way. So we're fixing to dig about a four foot wide hole. Okay. You know, at least. How, to get how deep? No deeper than this pot. All right. This pot is about 12 inches deep, but we don't want to go any deeper than that. In fact, I'm going to probably go a little bit shallower than that because we're on a little knob here. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, a low spot here, and I want to put it on a little bit of a knob to build that soil up a little bit for, for adequate drainage. Uh, for azaleas, for example, that's extremely important. It's better to uh, it's better to plant them just a touch high. The, the, the saying from from colleges is plant them a little high, they'll never die. Plant them low, and and I don't know what the other part was. But, <laughs> I like that though. You know, so yeah, especially with azaleas. Uh, so in this case, we just looking where here to have, allow plenty of room. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm already imagining this thing being very large, and probably one of mulch about a ten foot area, Kenny. You just go ahead and take that out, kill the grass, put that mulch on top of it, mm -hmm. and just to declare this is the zone for the crate myrtle. Okay. And so, you know, I keep, I'm coming to right here. That's about the center of this little triangle area. So you can start digging out here. Let's just start. No, we don't go that far. Okay. We'll just see how how well this ground is. We just, you know, probably about like this right oh, here. Oh, my phone's ringing. Hold, hold. You go, you go ahead. Just, you go ahead. <laughs> I'll get this phone. Folks, I think he planned that. <laughs> going around? Just going around with it. I'm, I'm working on about a three foot hole or so and we'll oh. try to do that. Now, now we, you and I talked about this about getting a, an auger to do this, but right. you said not to. Well, we'd have to have a big auger for that kind of pot, but uh, and, and, and an auger is something that that, that you, that, uh, most of it's gasoline powered, right. but you, you it, 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 it drills it. And Correct. You said he'd rather use a shovel. I'd rather really use a shovel because we're gonna go beyond just a hole to put this in there. Right. And uh, one thing we're also gonna do is try to break up some of the slick part of the ground on the edge uh -huh. so those roots can can penetrate that clay area and get on into the native soil. An auger is nice, but if you do, if it's not big enough, then you're basically just put, making a hole like a post hole digger and putting in the plant in there and just hoping it will survive and branch those roots out. And the, the chances are it may not. If anybody's looking for a shovel, this will be out in my front yard. I don't normally like to folks try to steal from me. I'll be honest with you. If you come steal this, I will not shoot at you at all. We're getting in some, some tree roots from trees behind us over here, or trees behind us over here in Magnolias. People always want to know about trees that's and tree they're roots. Running. They're coming from the trees that's, that's at least 30 feet away. And we're, we're hitting tree roots already. Right. So don't be fooled by where the tree roots are. They're out a lot further than you might think. 
and they're only six inches deep. Mm -hmm. Your feeder roots are only within the top 12 inches mm -hmm. of, of the soil. That looks fairly good. Um, I think we're, we're good on our depth. It's because I want to build that up just a little bit right. and not have it sitting in a hole because it'll hold water. Right. Um, now, one thing that's important to do, we made it wide, we made it correct depth. You want to try to break some of this on the edges. Loosen that up. All right, is that for when it starts running? Correct. It can grab hold? And actually, not grab hold, but actually penetrate okay, yeah, yeah. and go past our hole. Now, if I, because you know as a shovel, when you take it and you make a slick point, uh -huh. roots cannot penetrate this area that's been slick off as well as it's been broken up a little bit. So we're allowing, we're breaking that tension point. All right. So those areas where those roots can actually get in. All right. We ready to put it in. And so that's just that's just a good habit to be a part of. Okay. Okay. And these are just little things that you're saying that can make a huge difference in a plant making it not making. It. Absolutely. Okay. Pay attention to the details. And I'm gonna show you one important detail next uh, as we come up with this. And I'm gonna show this. Is We'll take it out of the bucket. That's it. There have been many cases where we've been, as the extension has been called to look up to a plant and the plant was still in the bucket in the ground. <laughs> but let me ask you this, are there any kind of plants that come to your mind that you leave them in the bucket? No. Okay. Not in this case. Take them out of the bucket. Take them out of the bucket. Put if it on your bucket, If miss. it's a large tree, ball and burlap, you still need to, to spread that out, cut any wires off, off the tree to allow those roots to get out. All right. In this case, you, it's entombing it. And that's why we're smoothing this out because if we don't break that tension of that clay area, we're just taking this plant and putting it in a big clay pot. Mm -hmm. The same effect is going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's still going to be entombed. All right. So grab hold of that. Pull. All right. All right, here. Out of the bucket. Out of the bucket. You can see all the roots. Jimmy, crack corn. All the feeder all right, roots. Man, do we do anything to this? Do we break it up in any We way? are. We're going to pull these out a little bit. Um, lots and lots of feeder roots on the bottom. Is that good? That's good. It's been in the pot for a while. Yeah. Uh, it's not pot bound. All right, because uh, that, that was something that was concerned. We, we tried to water it. And, uh, if it's, if it's pot bound, care of this one. you're going to see a lot of large roots begin to go in a circle and crisscross it. Uh -huh. And that's almost impossible to get that out. So in this case, we're going to sort of break this up, massage these roots a little bit, loosen those out. We want those to break that area, get out of that potting mix. It's okay if you rip them or break them, they'll grow back. In some cases, you may, if it's a large root, you may have to cut it. Uh -huh. So this soil's... Well, your hands are getting dirty. That's the fun part. Just get in there and get that root uh, sometimes you take a shovel, take a knife, and yeah, there's 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 your difference in the two. There's your difference. But I mean, it, it, this is this is good stuff. Just pull that out. Just get you just want the roots to start to go out. So it's not dead. No, it's not dead. Those roots would be a different color. They would be brown in color instead of yellow or white. All right, all right. This guy, this thing's been several See, months. So there's a, that's a root that are broke. No big deal. Okay. okay. All right. Now, since I got a low spot on the other, I'm gonna flip it around. Okay. Want those roots to go in and out. Okay. The other thing about a, a, a shrub, it's not as noticeable necessarily on the tree, but you always want to choo choose your best side. Mm -hmm. They have a face and they have a back end mm -hmm. as well. So prominent area you might want to choose the, the better area in this case I'm choosing the wider side for your home so, so it's, it looks a little nicer probably from this that is side. a six foot plus six to eight foot plant well, by the springtime will it be will it grow it probably grow about two to three feet a year okay okay on, on, on average mm -hmm. so, so do we start filling in now we can I'm just, see, I'm just seeing to see what it looks like Of course, it's hard to beat crepe myrtle. I mean, it's, you're going to do some trimming and trimming.
training on it later on that it may change. But not this year? Not right now. Not right now. How about spring? We could do something probably in January and February, and we might do a little trimming here and there, but nothing nothing major on it this year. We right. want to grow. Right. In this case, you got several main branches. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. You got five main branches. Mm -hmm. That's probably going to be way enough. Okay. Uh, this, this branch will eventually go out. This one will go out uh, and uh, be very, very nice. Those are a little close. We'll have to evaluate those as it gets older. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we're ready to fill it in. Do it. Come on, Again, man. Again, we're going to go back and use the existing soil that we've had. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very good quality in this case. It's, it's good and broken up. Nice and broken up, so we just backfill it. I'm gonna just gently put some of that soil down a little bit. Uh huh. Uh, don't want. I'm not covering the root ball at all with any native soil. I want that root ball to stay where it is. Just sort of break those up. You know you got good soil when you got earthworms. Yeah. Oh really? Good fishing worm, man. Yeah. Now we just want to sort of get all that in there. On this low side, I'm going to actually add a little dirt here to this back end side to serve as a dam so that any water that collects or runs down or rainfall will. will actually collect in there and help keep it watered. Okay. Uh -huh. We'll go ahead and water the, the plant in. We call this burping the hole. This is actually to get any water around, so, around, all the way it. around it, around your, your, root, your root ball and the soil that we added. We want that soil to settle in, get any major air pockets out, and that'll, like I said, it'll help settle the soil around a little bit better. And also needs water. More water. Pour a little right there. Right on top of the root ball. Most of our water running down here. Well, that, that thing's pretty well ready. Next rain we get, for it to pretty much stay. Oh yeah. In this case, we don't have to stake it or anything like that. It's it's heavy enough that wind's not going to blow this one over. Okay. If it was a large tree or something like that. Then we pine. potentially have to have to guide it. We put that whole thing of pine bark on there. Yes, sir. And here again, if we use this around the maple tree, right, to maybe not run into some problems, potential problems. problems. Yeah. We'll need probably two bags of this. All right. But this, uh, so put. Uh, I am bath. putting this on the root ball. Nothing wrong with that. All right. In fact, it probably went a depth about three inches. For, for what? For purpose? Uh huh. To hold moisture in. All right. Weed control. Uh huh. Uh, it actually serves as a uh, to, to keep the plant uh, uh, warm, warm in the winter time. It keeps it actually a little cooler. Okay. Keeps grass from growing on and. Mm -hmm. It, it actually looks good too. Looks good. That's, that's another thing. It also, as it breaks down, it's actually replenishing, building that soil up. So, because it's organic matter that mm -hmm. we're actually adding to the soil. Mm -hmm. Now, and this is just uh, pine bark. This is just regular pine, just regular pine bark nuggets. Okay, nuggets. No. If you got pine straw, you could use that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. Just you know, if you got some around, just just use that. Okay. This is this is this is critical. How about leaves? Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Matter of fact, uh, if you had a bunch of leaves, especially if they were aged or chopped up, maybe from a lawnmower, uh -huh. put them out on the base of it first, then put something a little heavier, heavier like straw or pine bark to keep those leaves from blowing around. Okay. okay. Well, that's good. So, it uh, does look good. Just add a little bark. Like I said, I probably would come back a little bit more. So get and, another and go out wide, go out wider than what we actually dug, uh -huh. and go ahead and establish their root zone and, and their, as a bed. All right. 
and this is you know we've added this as a main feature now you can easily expand this area and add some so maybe some perennials or something else okay. okay to to actually turn this into a bed in this case maybe of a v-shaped circular type bed okay and this is your feature you got, you got this so is your accent from. and then you've got other things that you can add behind it okay